All right, welcome back. So now we're going to attempt to now a long, long uh, pose, if you will, if, if even cloth can and drapery can pose, right? Actually, a long term uh, drawing now using uh, our drapery here. So, I'm going to be working now uh, with uh, the polychromos pencils. There's the kind of the waxier pencil here as well. I'll probably lay in with a little bit of a red and a black in terms of gesture and then white uh, drawing paper. So, now as we progress forward, uh, we've talked about the four terms that are really helpful with rendering and analyzing and drawing drapery, and that's pitch and roll, right? High and low. So the pitch and the roll, and then up high and then lower with our uh, study here. So I'm going to pop up now the image as I get my paper. Uh, Put in here. I'm going to pop up the image that we're going to be working from, and this is again a uh, what I did here with the drapery is I mounted it to my studio wall here in, at the, the university, and then um, uh, with pins, and you can see them where um, some of the stronger angles are where they hang off of, and then I twisted and turned the drapery a little bit to make it a little bit more, hopefully a lot more interesting to manipulate, and then I lit it. And then, and then shot it and then um, are ready to, to draw from it. Or if you're not working from an image, I highly suggest that you work from life uh, or the actual object as much as you can or as possible as you can. I think that's going to help quite a bit. And so that's how I did the setup. So now we're going to work the composition. I'm going to make the composition a little bit more horizontal just as a little bit easier to work with my camera. But you can turn your, your picture plane vertical high uh, up and down rather than long ways left and right to make it a little bit easier for you. So, okay. All right, so let's lay in. So we're going to work with our drapery here and we're going to work with our gesture, okay, getting the, the feeling and the flow of, of, this, of this form, right? It's kind of a triangular bowl shaped, you know, kind of, kind of a form coming down. Let really me keep it loose and, and simple and flowy. So we can make lots of corrections and we'll get deep into this long, long study later on. It's kind of a bowl shape. So I'm going to get, you know, really use compositionally and design rise, really use all this space from top, you know, to bottom. So I'm going to make sure that I'm using the, the, um, the fullness of now the, the, um, the sheet here. My camera is a little bit out of focus here. Get back in focus, mister. Come on. It's not going to work if you don't. Get back in focus there. There we go. Sorry about that. It's a little strange there. So, um, now again, compositionally, we want to use all that uh, and, uh, feeling here of, of what we're doing here. So, um, full top, full bottom here on the picture plane. So, a lot of times I notice students where they're having some of their their most pro uh, problematic uh, starts is they're starting somewhere in here, but they're not really reaching the farther regions of their picture slant. So be careful, you know, in that in that sense as you're working. I think, um, you know, part of that problem is to make sure you're getting all the way out to your picture planes, and if not, also even cropping. I think that's going to be an even more helpful um, uh, part of it. So make sure you're getting at least to the picture plane edge, if not all the way through and, and, and over. I think that's going to help you know, quite a bit as we're working through this composition. So kind of a triangular you know, bowl shape going on in through here. Okay, as we're working through, coming over, coming up. And using horizontal vertical alignment, I'm feeling to where this um, part of the tie-in over here comes over. It's a little bit more than halfway. This, this part through here getting this shape, so it's a little bit higher up and bisects a little bit higher than halfway through, doesn't it? So all the way over and through here, so we have that, you know, working for us, tying in through here, coming over, <clears throat> bowling, kind of, when I say bowl, it's kind of an under, undercut of a bowl shape right in through here and off and over coming through like so okay so we see this tie this knot over and through here roughly i'm just going to kind of 
loosely lay it in, very light, very loose, through here, and then it's a little bit bunched over and through here, a little bit lower. It's kind of another secondary tie-in. It's a lot like this one, right, in through here, but a little bit, you know, shorter coming down. And they're a little bit now <clears throat> coming through here, showing us a little bit lower, slightly tilted over and through here, coming downward. Okay, through. So we sketch our gesture in. Okay, coming on through and down and over. So I, I consider these about three parts. This middle, maybe four parts. This middle strong part in through here. This secondary part here, right? This third part and then maybe this little tie-in, which is kind of the fourth part in through there. So we have that tie-in here and over. So we're gesturing all these, and we'll get all that nice turning detail, that pitching and rolling of a lot of our um, uh, drapery here in a little little while. We want to get, again, like, like the figure, if you're not used to drawing the figure or any other object, we want to get that compositional flow in, gesture flow in first, right? And then we'll get to the details, you know, much, much, much later as we're working, as we're working on through there, okay? <clears throat> coming up and over and through as high as I can get this over to the top, the apex here of the composition. And we'll just begin to just let this curve over, very general. We'll get plenty of much more detail time in that starts to flow outward, even further out through here. <clears throat> Later on, that'll bunch over through there. <clears throat> So we don't want you to be afraid of drapery. We want you to dive into drapery and dive into the figure and still life objects because what you'll find, even though I break them down into different component sections, like the basic section and in perspective, but for the most part, drawing them all is about, feels about the same. Oh, quite honestly, they're about all the kind of same, you know, feeling of, of uh, an understanding of, uh, of uh, drawing a form that you get pretty much, you know, anywhere or with any, any object. They're really very similar in their, in their um, feeling and concept of a cube or a sphere or a cylinder. So working through now the form. So we can draw together. You're drawing along with me, which is a great mentoring kind of approach. Here, so just getting that feeling, and this might be a little incorrect later on, we can go back and change that, okay. So look, we're gonna add light and value, work our edges across, just like we've done with longer term poses with other still life objects, and also with now the figure coming in through, okay, and up, over. It's gonna catch over, nice and, Really taut here at the at the uh, high point, but then it hangs pretty nicely. It comes on down, and we get that feeling of really the tautness here. Then a nice gracefulness that comes over this way as well. And through here and around. So just working this larger, bigger shape in there. So we got to go from large general areas to get to that, the specific areas later on, right? So we'll come through <clears throat> and wrap around and through here and over. Just getting that as it, as it kind of, as it hoods over, comes over here through here, it's kind of like a ribbon too as well. Don't worry about making all the mistakes. It's where you want to keep drawing lightly. Uh, unless you're drawing with a real kind of unforgiving process like, um, maybe a felt tip pen, ink drawing of some sort, and then you're allowed to make a lot of mistakes, then you can correct, and that's part of the charm of it too as well. We'll probably go into more detail or I'll go into more analysis about letting mistakes happen. And um, the art world is littered with wonderful draftsmen and women that have made um, expressive drawings that are mistake-filled, but that work, that are not even mistakes anymore. They work because the consistency of the of the work 
is um, working for them, if you will. All right, so I don't want to get too bogged down in all these subsections of the forms here. What I want to do now is to, I've, I've, I've split into two sections. We've got here, here, right? Now I want to get this major next section just, just filled out first. Notice I'm keeping these lines really light and loose and fairly straight. And then we'll get into much more detail. So I've got these major third sections in through here for the for the most part. This could be later on a little bit thinner. And through there, now I'm going to fill down this bowl section where the ties in roughly coming over and then through here. Okay, and then coming in through and down around. I'm going to crop this out a little bit actually even. So I'm going to come down and use this paper because I can see uh, that I'm going to go a little bit lower and I'm okay with that. Or I could, you know, I could shorten it up too for compositional sake and make this a little bit smaller. But there, let's just kind of play this by ear a little bit and see what happens. Okay, even if we crop it, that's okay. It's cropping sometimes is better than just initial budding too as well. Okay, come over and through. Okay. <clears throat> Just getting the feel of all this emerging and evolving, keeping this gesture very light, loose. Really, it's the action, if you will, of the drapery coming through. The initial active drapery. Yeah, I'm just going to crop just a little. Right at the I'm okay with that. Let that come on down. And, over. and later on, I might actually even correct, recorrect, and just bring it up a little bit to keep it on the paper. I haven't decided yet, so I might do that. So it's up to you where your paper's at. <clears throat> here, here, coming through now with this finish of the bowl. So I probably will bring it up later just to keep that turn clear, just to get that shape in. So I'll do some correcting later and revising. And you'll get to see all that which is totally normal, coming up and through, getting a very soft kind of outline up and through and over, coming okay, around through here. <clears throat> now, the height of this hub here, right, is about where this knot is, maybe just a little, just slightly higher, just a little bit. So most of it was lower, but the knot coming up is a little bit higher. So right in through, here's the hub, so pretty good. It's kind of like a cone, isn't it? Right in through here, okay, and then coming down, and over and through, just take your time, because you've got that, this negative space where the dark is, that V-shape, right in through there. Okay, so we have that coming through. So that, it's looking pretty good now in terms of just an overall beginning, and let's see where this bottom will turn in later on. Here we can kind of cut through there, just go a little bit darker up. We know that's going to wrap it over, and this is going to come out a little bit more through here and then around, like so. So it cones up and over, like it does there, and this is going to come through. Okay, so that's pretty much we've got the lay in now where I want to set in things with my gesture. Now, the next step that I want to start to undertake is to go a little bit deeper within these sections and gesture in where I feel the pitch and roll really of the folds. That's going to help a little bit uh, further too. So we can start up here. This is not any, any kind of definitive detail yet. You have to really be careful with all that. It's still very much just initial gestural kind of lay in sketching through here. And over and coming down, so we'll kind of focus on this hood a little bit uh, more and then turn this curve over a little bit thicker here. Okay, and then a little bit thinner coming down so I can see it a little bit better in my mind. I'll clean up the line work. And through there. So we have that. And I'll bring this hood over where this is pitching. It's rolling over where you see the light in there because we know the light source is coming where. So if you don't know yet, you should know already it's coming from the right. Okay, that's important. So coming from the right here, this way flowing through and over. Okay, it's curving in. Then we have this little gathering here. Do you see it? This is gathering here. 
Okay, and over, keep it very light. It's gathering a little curve through. Okay, like so, so. Okay, and then a little sub, sub uh, curving under through there of another one. Okay, all right. Now, next one I want to get is coming over through here. This under rib, as it turns in through here and over, and it's going to come down. So all these are going to, going to feel a lot like this apex, this V-shape, coming up to where kind of the focal point is through here high, right? So that's a uh, strong, strong thing you should consider, or what I, what I feel is important here. So that's where it comes together, right in through there, bunches in through here, right in through here, about the same, almost the same, maybe just a little bit lower, right in through, in here and over, okay. <clears throat> the, the point is to get the essence of all this. We don't have to get everything exact uh, or every single detail. That's not necessarily the point of it. But we want to get a good, good solid feeling of it. Unless you're kind of a, a photo realist, then you're going to take even more kind of careful time with that. It seems a little boring to me. I'm not a photo realist. I, photography can stand on its own and we kind of allow it but that's okay so we're coming over here now and we're coming up to this fold and through here and kind of coming up to that apex for now it's going to be a lot of lines later but what i want to get the more dominant one so what we see is this one here coming over okay like so here and then coming down like so and then do you see this where it curves over like that, it's coming over, cupping over like that. We get that in through here. This curves in through here, right there, and then coming down and through and up to there. To there, we could put a little soft, be a little bit softer with the tone since we know it's gonna be there, just to feel that, feel that out a little bit, right in through. Okay, and that's where that curves in a little bit. We can be careful with that, running through down. And then, then I have a feeling of where all this is going to droop down and come low now, all the way through and catch over to here. Kind of makes a little hub in through here and then over and down. And it's going to catch right before the knot in through here. Okay, right in through there, right? So we're going to catch that and of course that's where that strong kind of looks like a a shell or a water wave will be in through here which is beautiful now i can pick that up a little bit later so when you find one part pretty accurately you're going to start later on to getting into other parts okay so what we have now is this flow coming down right so we have that so we can see that moving through we have that the kind of the shell the water flow in through here Coming down, I'll have to, not going to be too too short, just maybe cut off just a little bit. It's not it's going to be too bad in through there. Composition is always important. Okay, and then we're going to feel, see how that feels, this flow, and then it feels through here, up and around, and then downward gestural flow. Just let it be light and loose. So we come through, we can always, uh, reposition if we need okay and then right where they kind of make the, this sort of cupping coupling curvature here then we have this x this the second one that's a little shadow here up and through and over and it goes higher so it's pitching upwards through here okay about right in through here which is another little subsection so we get a little bit more definition and so now i'm looking where this bowl curve comes up and touches this section as it goes back to the knot, which is the knot here, which is the tie-in, right? So this is feel like it's a little harder edge now. It can be a little bit more definitive. Pretty good there to here. If not, I can always correct it. Okay, so they kind of come together, get bunched right in through here, and then ultimately where this comes down and moves into here, that's pretty much where I've got that end of the drapery and I can start to feel a little bit more definitive line weight right in through right in through there it feels starting to feel a lot stronger and better together as we as we see 
All right, and so now this gives us again, like I said, this gives us this, this little bit more definitive area in through here, okay? So this little, sort of like a upside down slice of an orange right in through here. So I'm gonna be just right on the edge and a little bit short, and I'll just keep it that way, and that's okay. And I'll show you that it really doesn't matter in the long run. You can change things for composition, which is more important than trying to be super accurate and then I think cropping out in that sense would be a little bit more problematic and not as good as a composition. So we can see what we got here. We can see this negative space, this darker space in between here later on. I could be a little bit longer here to make it a little bit more accurate. Okay, and higher as it curves up, maybe curve up a little bit uh, up and through here and around. Okay. So see how we can start to find, we get one piece, we can start to get another section a little bit more easier. And then you can, you can adjust your composition to see how accurate or inaccurate you were. And you can make uh, corrections all the time. Corrections are intensely important. And in the, in the more you draw, the faster your corrections will get quite a bit. All right, so we have that drapery coming across here and over. And we can start to come in now to the under under drapering in here get that comb with this kind of coney look cone like look uh, over this top hood i almost think these are kind of like squid like the animal with the uh, the sea creature just the way they kind of look drapery can look like that so we're coming in through here a little bit further and so this will all be now a little darker in through here. So I'm just going to throw a little bit of initial shadow tone over it just so I can kind of see things a little bit better here and see how this is going to be darker. Here this negative space so I can see under that because we're going to have this little extra space. So it's all really going, isn't it, from this idea of very general uh, sh uh, form and, and shape, gesture, and then we'll get into specific Specific. So general to, you know, specifics uh, later as we continue and go forward and, and go on. All right, so uh, this next row in through here about right in through here as we see will come down. This, this uh, hood coming through and over it feels almost kind of parallel uh, as it comes through. It's a little bit, a little bit in a little bit like that. So we see that. And then what we see is coming over, kind of this diagonal that we see it here on the object as we draw. And what we notice coming through is this coming over and down. So it's a secondary fold within that. Folds over, we want to keep this subtle for now. And then it goes behind as it pitches around and rolls lower over and this as, a, as an angle, then it comes back and it picks back up underneath a little bit, doesn't it? We talked about that in some of the more lecture diagrams. It comes up underneath here and then kind of starts to curve and gets into some bunching in through there. So that's about, that's pretty good for what we, I think what we have, we can get through here for now. I think we have that and then we can come up later on and, and later really really go to uh, go into more detail and specifics really go to town if you will right in through there so let's pick apart this area a little bit further so now as it curves here okay and it comes around and opens up we can see that open a little bit and so that's why i'm drawing really lightly in red and i can go back and, and really tighten things up later on in black so we can come around here and so we have a, a roll here, right? And then we have another roll, another major roll here. So we're looking for that big major roll that comes kind of in the middle that hooks into about right under here, doesn't it, right? In through there. And it comes in. It's easy to get lost. We have to come over here, feel this, right? There's another roll here, and then it's kind of where the, it turns under, where it goes low, in there where that shadow is. We can start to define it by softer uh, drawing feeling. Can't we right in through here to get that shadow shape? So I'm gonna define it by 
Also a shadow shape coming over in through here and around. Okay. And then we'll gonna, we're going to fit through here. It kind of gets a little bit of a hooded turn. gets a little bit um, a, more, a stronger angle, doesn't it, as it's darker. That's where that little lip is and through there. Then it comes darting over to here, doesn't it? Right in through there. Have that there. And over in there is your knot. Okay, right in through there. So we're going to come back over and I'm going to feel that shadow shape. So we're kind of laying in and blocking in all in one shot. So we'll just feel this general uh, shadow shape in through here. Okay, we'll have that right there. <clears throat> and then we're going to come up and over in through there, and then we're getting that shadow shape, which is part of the core shadow and roll of the, the form in through here. So I'm going to try to make this easier now. I know this is getting complex, and that's okay, but I'm just going to darken, just very lightly darken in, not heavily, darken in that, that space in through here, crooks over, like so, it comes in through, and then I'm going to hit over. Okay, see where the shadow is here now. So see it you're coming around this shadow space in here. Okay, and through. Okay, and around and through here. Okay, and over. Right in through there. <clears throat> so we see that. Now that's just, that's just helping me locate. Because so I've got to find a way to locate and pick through all of this later on. Because you can see now from where we started about 10 minutes ago to where we're at now is a lot more uh, defined, but we still are in a very general phase, right? We have a long way to go. So you help yourself out by definitive sections, right? But also by a little bit of tone. We don't want to get deep into tone or value right now, but we will, we will a little bit later on. So I'm going to take this shape, uh, the shadow shape of the, of the binding area as it turns around and just define it by simple tone. Okay, here. Okay, it's defined by the line, shadow through there, and then coming around, over and through here, and then downward. Okay, and around, like so. I say that a lot, like so, I know. <clears throat> I so say it a lot, I get it. Right in through there, and then we're going to turn where this, this kind of wrapping, as it kind of twists like a towel, see how it twists? just to get a little shadow through there. So the reason why I'm doing that is it anchors my drawing a little bit. Some of it's incorrect and I'm going to change it. At least I assume it's going to be. So I've got some of that initial shadow. Maybe I should go just a, just a touch darker. Okay, so you can see it. Just to help me ground, uh, ground, ground everything a little bit stronger as to, as to where I'm at. Okay. To keep it keep it very very simple even where this kind of this under hooding is where this this over hooding and here through here right is there I can give a little bit of, of tone so where the light ends and the shadow begins that's form shadow we'll get into those core shadows later but we'll that way you can see this a little bit more and I can see it so it helps me out too as well it's not just been beneficial for the instruction but also for the, the one doing the instruction, which better better know what we're doing, right? All right, so now all this then, as this curves up, this just tells me where things are at. So when I look through here, this might be a little later on, a little bit lower. to so this kind of uh, arrow head or triangle, actually triangular shape is probably better to say there. And all that, of course, is in shadow, okay? Right in through here. Just a very simple kind of shadowy process that's happening right in through there. So we have that. Now, coming over, since we have, uh, we've got some, some sections going on here, I probably won't do, well, I might do a little bit of shadow actually, coming through here, coming down, and then over and through. Keep it very general. Because this could go on a long, long time just to help you out. This is going to be a firmer line coming down through, coming through, and over to this one, which will be a fold later on. Now, let's stop here 
and come on over to this section, work on this a little bit further, and start to uh, pick apart, if you will, or tease apart uh, some of these areas so we can begin to see what's happening here in addition to what we've done here. This will help, or that will help uh, tremendously. I've got a little sticker on this pencil. I hate when they put those little markers on the pencils and such. It gets in, kind of gets in the way, doesn't it? But that's the way it is here in America. As we suffer through our own kind of silliness from time to time, as you can, the world can see. <clears throat> okay, so we come over around through right so keep it still gentle it's kind of like a cone I'm just reorienting reorienting the shape a little bit right in through there and then we'll come on down okay like so and then bulge out and then downward and out a little bit further to keep that now the first thing I want to do is just to is to tease out some of these parts so one major section is right here where this turns right we have this turn right you see that it curls over it's kind of like this but it curls over this way okay and then it comes on down at a little bit more of an angle finds this little hub hidden through here and then we're almost underneath that bowl a little bit right in through there and so what I find is this little anchor point right in through here it wants to come up like some of these coming up it wants to come up here at this anchor point and I'm trying to find in my mind where does it tighten into like this little hood here right in through here and so there's the line I'm looking for about right there okay right in through there and that's a strong shadow isn't it so now I can find generally the shadow shape here as it turns and pitches high okay and it goes low in there right in through here so I'm just generalizing that shape to help me out down and through okay and over like so, it's a little bit smaller coming through, kind of like that. So we have that here. Because there's going to be another roll in there later on. This is going to come out. So I'm looking at that white of the cloth and then the darker that the shadow makes. Coming in through here. Okay, and up and over and through. And around. Okay, and then most of this over here is in shadow except for the shape of the, of the edge. And we, so we can use its shape, very two-dimensional thinking for now, up and through and over, and then downward and through, generally speaking, and then we can block that in. So we're combining now the line and the line and a little bit of tone so we can find all this together. We can get it generally generalized and generally lay in and then we can really analyze and see how well we did and where we made some errors and we can pick things apart and we can, we can change quite a bit. Because all this later on is going to have these high and low areas, high again, right, low areas coming down and it's pitching, right, it's pitching this way and everything is on a roll, isn't it? So high and low, pitch and roll. Um, is about the best terminology that I think I can I could have used for the most part when I was designing how to teach beginning to teach drapery. So we we it's taught in through tight in through here and very taut. Okay. And so I'm looking at this section of line, okay, to bring out generally the edge of the roll. And then we see this little uh, turn here, right? See this little leg? And it turns in, crooks over, turns in, and then it comes up over here, doesn't it? Right in through there. Okay. And that helps me find that shadow shape, which is a strong low area where it's rolled, it's pitched and it's rolled into the other. So here, so and then downward. Okay. And so I'll just block that in with a little tone. And I turn, turn my pencil to the side. Block that in. Okay, we have that. And that's going to come out. Then it pitches outward. It kind of flows outward, doesn't it? And we'll get to that little lip here in a moment. Right in through this rolling over in my mind, over and through here. And then I'm going to get this opening of where this little L, this little leg is. The thickness here we have to be mindful of. Right in through here. Keep it simple. 
Don't let don't get bogged down by the detail. Okay, for now. We'll get more detail later on. Up and through here, we'll make our corrections. Okay, and this tightens up and through here, a little bit thinner and loose, and it comes up and it's going to bunch up into that point that we saw a little bit earlier, or had earlier. And this whole area in through here really now, including a little bit over through here, is pretty much now all in shadow. So I'll show you for the most part right in through here. Most of this is just all for the most part in kind of a shadow. It's kind of a mouth. It kind of opens up a little bit right in through there and over. Okay, so that helped us quite a bit. Now we're getting a little bit more separation, aren't we, in these, in these areas. This section, this section, and in these subsections as well. So let's go pick apart this little, this, this bottom rolling bowl section and this kind of water flow of waves, kind of a Hakusai Japanese wave, beautiful Japanese wave in through here. And let's get this coming over and downward. And through here, okay, and in, and through, and most of this is going to be in shadow, isn't it? So about right in through here is going to be where all this, we're just going to cape all this right now, just a little light shadow. Okay, I know it's a lot more uh, detailed than what it is. We'll get there later, and this is going to roll over, and up and through. We'll find those a little later, these tight points in through here as it comes over, okay? Rolling in through, and the line, the edge I want to get is where this opening is, where this little cascading line for now comes through, and about right here where it creases. We have a lot of creases to work out. Right in through here, creases over, and then downward. But then there's a little space where we find the next edge where there's a course shadow there. That's important, we find a little boundary and then it comes over to catch this little edge here. So we've got that, right? This curls through, curls through and downward. Keep it light, you can always change it if you draw nice and light and loose. It's very basically a gesture. And then it's gonna come down and then lip out an edge over and through here and over. Now I'm gonna have to, I'm shorting, I'm shorting this a little bit so I can keep it in the, in the drawing. It should be a little bit, a little bit longer. But we can change that if you need to in yours, you're okay. All right, so then what happens, let's get this little shadow shape here, okay? This little undercutting. So we can just give ourselves a grounding. So we're using line, lay in, shape, and block in as we think about pitch and roll with our drawing and high and low with our drawing and our drapery through here. Then over, now there's a lot going on in through here. We'll come around. The edge I want to get is right here. It just gathers and tightens in here. Then up and through. <clears throat> okay, and then around. All right, and then over maybe a little bit higher just for the sake of it. You're coming through, it's kind of looks like underwear too, baby's underwear, like a diaper. So you get a leg would come here and a leg would come here. Do you kind of see that? It's kind of weird. Just a little bit right through there. Okay. okay. Very general still here, underneath here. And then this one is light, this one is darker. Okay, a little smaller for now. We can go back and change. Always, we always want to allow ourselves to change, unless there's a reason not. Sometimes there is, but for now we can go back and change these openings and these shapes here. And I've been through this little shadow, a little triangular curvy curve, right in through there. And I think we've got enough for my for what I think is the first pass of our drapery. So we've got a composition now, we've used gesture, and we're starting to break into and uh, understand now these sections of where we're at with um, our drawing and our placement. Now the next step is to start to reevaluate everything and now uh, uh, begin to tighten things up just a little bit, 
just a little bit more as we get to um, the second and the third phase, as we get into more, more detail and then rendering the light and, and form and, and edges and values and contrast. It's, it's got a, a good lay and start, but there's a long way to go still. All right, so let's go on now to, to um, the next, next phase of it, okay? Okay, so here we are now in phase two, and for this phase, um, what I want to do now is start to tighten up some of the, the drawing, meaning that we've laid in our gesture, uh, we've found our flow and our rhythm through the major break sections of each um, area relatively uh, of, the, of the drapery, and now we want to break, down, break that down even further and become more... Um, more polished with it, even though that won't be the finished part of it, but this is kind of the second wave of the drawing. So why don't we start in there, we can make corrections, etc. as we go. So it's like coming back over it, but now being careful to, to begin to really see things cleaner and a little clearer with the drawing. And I'm going to start to work now the, the dark, a darker pencil of this uh, as well as we go through and really begin to tighten things up and alter things as I go along as I narrate as we go along too as well. <clears throat> and then we'll start to add light and more value and really begin to, to make this drawing come alive a little bit further, this, this uh, rendering, if you will. But remember, it's not photo real, so we're not going to spend, you know, 40, 50 hours, I'm not going to time lapse it. We're making good academic study of this cloth and this drapery coming on through the drawing. All right, so starting up here at the top and getting clearer and cleaner, you know, with the line work, and sometimes I'll slip over with the with my hand uh, holding pattern here, slip into a pin holding process when I need it as well. So we'll sit back and really dig into this drawing a little bit further. And see what we did right, see what we did not quite so right, and then make adjustments as we, as we go along. <clears throat> a little bit more folding detail, that'll fold under and in. This comes over a little bit, like so. And it's gonna tuck in and around. Through there and through. And so, you know, it, part of it's also about those edges, right? Hard edges versus soft edges um, and different levels of contrast, too, to get those edges to work. <clears throat> Hitting that edge through there. It overlaps and comes over that fold. <clears throat> so one thing about, again, working with wax pencils is they're nice because they don't smear or smudge, but they're, you, you have to really work them to push down hard and to get them dark enough. I can adjust the contrast on my camera later, but you really have to put, put a great deal of effort and they break a lot. So it's kind of annoying in my opinion, a little bit. I don't use wax pencils often, unless I'm demoing, because I think students like to start out that way a lot. I know I did before I moved on to a lot of charcoal, other, other products and materials. So getting this under fold running through here. So, you know, a good, a good tip is to take, you know, as you go through these smaller sections and break them down, go from general to to specific. It'll make, it'll make a long drawing, but it'll be fairly accurate, really accurate. You can make mistakes or alterations, which is okay, because <clears throat> we don't have to be exact. It's not a photograph. We're not making an exact copy. We're making a, a statement of the drawing. So this little fold here, this little pitch, the little creasing roll, See, and I'll soften up a little bit later as we make that work for us. <clears throat> and this is a slow roll now. 
across this. So where I'm putting this value, okay, that's that roll now on that cloth as it's rolling and turning over. It's very important to see that. <clears throat> and so I'm also going to put some background tone pretty quick on there. Pretty, 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 pretty quick. And those of you that like Larry David, pretty, pretty quick. You get to that little inside joke. Curb your enthusiasm. All right. Tighten up this edge a little bit, this line. There we go. I'm going to get my triangle out over here on my desk just in case I need it later to keep that edge. Again, remember you can put this underneath your hand as you're drawing to keep your drawing from smudging and smearing so much as well. <clears throat> so now I'll come over here and I'll start to hit the shading edge a little further up into here. Okay, but I'm not going to stop there. I'm going to go ahead and, and begin to flutter this background tone some. So we're going to start to work all that in together. Okay. As we can start to play this longer study out. We can bring all this out together, right? So we can catch this core shadow in through here where my pencil is and then catch later that reflected light on the edge, right? And then come through and catch the also a little bit now at the beginning of that background tone too as well. <clears throat> so and see how I have different hand holding you know positions. Is really important. This is more like a conductor position, even though it's kind of in the palm method, but the, the pencil is held really, really, really far out, isn't it? Far out, dude. Okay. <clears throat> Catch this edge. It's right here. Tighten up that edge. <clears throat> through there. <clears throat> wonder how long it's going to take before I break my first pencil. I don't know yet. You should start, you guys out there in YouTube land and my other students should start taking bets when you watch a video for the first time to see when that's going to, I can feel it coming on pretty soon. I have a pretty, pretty heavy touch. I always have even when I was a student and it was harder to control that, and with these soft, with these soft, well, relatively soft uh, Faber Castell pencils, you have to push down pretty hard sometimes. That's why I don't like them as much as wax pencils, but that's okay because we're here for you guys. I'm here for you guys here in this video. So you can come across this way to, to tease out the rolling of that, but it's pretty easy to come a long ways for now. Looks like. Starting to get that core shadow to work for us. And pop in this reflected light. Keep that a little bit lighter. We want that core shadow to, to pop out a little bit further. So we see it just gently through here. Coming around and over. Okay. Fill this. Now remember, this is a drawing, so we're not doing a, a photographic rendering. So we don't need every little tiny little fold. And that red, I changed over to the black. The red is kind of my in-lay-in gesture. <clears throat> and then we can come back over it in the black. You could have done it the opposite way if you wanted to. It doesn't really matter if you wanted like a redder looking cloth, which is kind of a drawing. <clears throat> okay. <clears throat> This is all about, part of this, this drawing is very abstract. It's just about edges, contrast, shape, 
as well when you get into these more detailed areas. A lot of students will ask me, how do I do glass? How do I do cloth or drapery? It's not so much the how, it's what's your purpose and what, what are you remembering to bring to the drawing when you do the drawing. And it's really when you break all this down, even the figure, light, value, edges, contrasts, shape, etc. So you could take your little eraser here and work on this little hub. Make this a little bit rounder. Right in through here. Erase out a little, a little bit. Even with wax pencil, you can erase out a little bit. As long as you get, get, don't get too dark too quick and it becomes real, real, real waxy. So I'll make this lip a little, a little bit more curved. Over like so, and then we'll bring this over through here, and this is softer. So the softer edge I want to generally hold way back on the pencil too as well, mostly. There we go, right in through there. Sometimes too I take my triangular edge and I'll hold it up, see how I can hold up against the edge and just kind of dig in there to make a real nice tight line through there. Here. <clears throat> And curving around, it's that little curvy, clothy lip that we want to get in there. Hope, hoping my head, my balding head is not too much in the way. Professor Baldy, bald spot. Again, my friends call me Professor, Professor Bald Spot. Friends can be just brutal, can't they? They get right to the truth. My wife says I can get, she get hair plugs, but that's never, that's not, that's not me. That's going to look silly. Look like a chia pet, and that could be really bad. Probably won't be a good look. And I'll come across here. Okay. My goal in life is to not look like a, like a chia pet. That would, that's not good. And my apologies to anybody out there that looks like a chia pet. I think that's a good look for you. Okay, through here, over, okay. So that's working pretty well. So we're just gonna come across this section, okay? Come across, working our edges. It's gonna take a while. It's gonna take you a while to finish this drawing. Try not to do it in one, in one session. I don't, I, I don't wanna do this all in one session. I can relax and do other things and come back to it when I can. So we have come down here, come to a lip here where it's darker, push that dark right in through there, okay, and over. <clears throat> so now I'm going to come across this hood a little bit in through here, right across and over. There we go. It comes up and it comes back in downward. It's got this nice little area where it really tucks in underneath kind of a dark little point there. You see that kind of coming through and over. So you can kind of get away with doing an additive subtractive drawing to it as well. I'll show you what I mean. You can overdraw a little bit, put a lot of extra value. Like for instance here, okay, we know there's some some of those kind of cone-like folds, but you could put a little extra tone over all that, right? And then you can come back. Okay, and then if I'm drawing up and through here, I can start to take my eraser just gently and start to tease out some of these areas. Here, there's three little, little areas where the right side of the light source is hitting that one. Okay. And then two there for now, and then three, three over here to bring it out again, right? You can tighten those edges here. Take that off. My Japanese mono eraser. So you can see those three here. Hopefully you can see those three areas kind of emerging here. A little bit. I've got a smaller Japanese mono eraser somewhere. I'll get that out in a moment. <clears throat> so you could come up 
in through this region, you can see now where we can say, okay, this is a little bit softer, rounder through here in these areas. Right in through here. And over. And then there's this little kind of conical pear shape that happens right up in through here. It's like a ball. Right in through here and over. You just have to be careful not to punch it too dark or too too tight with your with your um, your pencil because they're still fairly fairly soft in through there and then over a little bit in here and around All right so we kind of have those three beads and I'll pull them back out a little bit there and there on that side just a little bit lighter for now okay <clears throat> then I can come back later on and even I'll probably tie those up even a great deal further later <clears throat> so I want to I want to as I'm coming down here I want to fill this under dark right in through this really dark crevasse area here you can see that really kind of those darks you can tell you're probably understanding that they really can hold a lot of uh, the design for you in the beginning as you're working through the drawing and kind of anchor everything as you go along okay, through narrowing this out a little a little further as it comes on down <clears throat> And of course, all this later on will be darker. I try to try to get my background working fairly early in terms of my design. I think that's important as well. It's going to come all the way through here. <clears throat> so I'll show you this little trick I do. Just kind of keep on working my line, but I'm using my hard edge just kind of just to kind of a contouring guide through there, through the drawing. <clears throat> okay, coming on in and over. That's coming on in. Just finding those more specific starting points for those folds. It's all about pitching and rolling, turning that, turning that, those forms and those rolls of the drapery. Turn them, turn, turn, turn them. Turn them around. They're tubes. They're, they're columns, if you will. There's a course shadow through there. So just refining my position through all this. This will all be delineated much stronger in the future. Working through and over. <clears throat> so I think part part of what gives students, as you're just starting your drawing journey out, such fits is this idea of the soft transitions and edges. Where's the hard edge? Where's the soft edge? You know that kind of thing. That that can be very difficult. And that's what we're having to negotiate here with this drawing is where some of the soft edges are, where some of the, the uh, harder edges are to varying different degrees because they can be sort of semi-soft and they can be sort of semi-crisp edged and they can change and fade a little bit and that can be very devilish, very, very difficult in the beginning running through. And up through here, as you're working through. <clears throat> so coming down, so our another real anchor for me is this kind of shape, right in through here, this end of this, which is like an old bedspread, or a, a sheet actually, bed sheet. Get this little curve thing folding through here. And so we've got some now you can see some stitching on there. 
This curves in and it over and almost disappears and there's a nice little place where it, the valley is almost the same so it almost disappears. Nice little crevasse there. Real subtle coming up and through here. There we go, up around, through. Okay. So it's really kind of cone shape, almost kind of like a squid, in my opinion, a little bit. <clears throat> so the, to me, the master drapery, Rubens, Velasquez, and, and um, Leonardo, if you want to see that. But they're very simple. It's, it's simplifying all that detail. I think probably what happens most of all is we get bogged down in too much detail too quickly. And that can be a detriment to us. So we can, we're, not, we're not making photographs, folks. We're making drawings. So allow yourself that pleasure to make a drawing and not a photograph. Let the photographers do the photography and we'll do, we'll do the drawing. I think you'll be happier with all that too as well. So kind of catching this next little underfold here and around there. I'm going to put that in shadow now. We're just taking it slow. Very general phase still. So no, no real big details. We get you know a little bit later, but those are still pretty general. We can I can make those seem even better later. <clears throat> if you can make a drawing scene, that'd be pretty cool. Then you could be a chia pet, and boy, really, you could really go off and have a solid career as a singer. Okay, that's a joke, by the way, out there. All right, <clears throat> here now. Coming through this cone-like part of it, we want to hit this coarse shadow, block in this shadow further through here. So here's the coarse shadow coming through. It's a little bit more substantial on the left. And I'm going to glaze over where those kind of little, little ball-like forms are here and over. Okay, for now. So all that block in of shadow. So all this is still going to be in shadow later. So we'll just go ahead and block further as we tease apart in the shadow. <clears throat> it's probably uncanny to think how actually how long we stay in a generalized state of drawing before you get to a lot of real details. Pretty, quite a while actually. Quite a long while. So I'm just calibrating down this value in through here. Okay. <clears throat> That's going to be over here later. <clears throat> So these darks help to anchor the inside of the drawing and give me a girding, give me a structure. And then these lighter, medium tonalities where are where these folds roll uh, up to somewhat in the shadow, but they're curving up and coming out of that. Just a little bit here, this little guy, this little squid-like fold coming through and over. Okay. Notice how often I'll change the hold of my pencil. Coming through, this is all around, flowing around and around. So you have this, notice see this edge where I'm drawing, pay, pay careful attention where I'm drawing right here. See this harder edge, it's really crisp in through here. See it? 
and then it comes up and see how it gradually gets a little softer than through there. See that? Then it really starts to get soft and it's, it's less deep, has less depth than through there. Here has greater depth and it's also darker in through here. And you'll see this side's got a harder edge to it later on as well because it's a deeper turn. Kind of reminds me of drawing the ear a little bit, all those crevasses and things that go on in there. A little bit darker through there. So it starts to give us something to work with. Do a little bit. Now this core shadow, right in through here, see that right in through there, darker banded part of that, soft banding. It's a little banded, but it's not, it's not a hard edge. Through here. Coming on through and over. Okay. And down. This will be a little bit darker with that stitching. Yeah, so I won't get all of that. And maybe in another pass, but I'll never go that deep with the detail in this type of drawing. Because it's not really a Again, a um, photo reel drawing. It's not the point. I'm not a big fan of doing photo reel drawings. I, I, I like a looser approach, but I like watching them. If you ever want to see a real master, he's a local uh, Ohio Cincinnati artist. His work is pretty powerful. His name is Armin Meerman, A R M I N Meerman. M E, I believe double E, M E E R M I N or M A N, Armin Meerman. Look him up, he's pretty powerful. He's a friend of mine, artist friend. So we want to soften this up a little bit here as this comes around and do this little cre uh, crease we've got going there and up and then that core shadow gets a little darker doesn't it? up and through there coming down it, and it molds or blends in through here a little further okay so that's working pretty well for us as we come around now we can kind of punch in a little dark in through here okay we'll come in this has a little divot it's kind of like uh, if you put your finger through it and made a divot like so through there, okay, <clears throat> working those edges, softer in here, a little harder on this edge over, I'm going to spike that out, this is going to be a little harder edge, it's just, just uh, coming through, okay, now I'll take, I've got my small Japanese model, yeah, probably not medium, sorry, in through here a little bit, and race out where I've overdrawn, <clears throat> right in through here, Take that out, which is kind of a round, soft divot. And through here and over. So all that is is kind of a little crease, a punch, if you will, into the... And then this can come out a little bit on the edge. Like so. Lighten it up a little bit, soften it up. A little bit through. Make that core shadow come in a little, like so, like that. Okay. Some good things happening here. Let me pull this over. Keep my hands from rubbing against the drawing so much. You can get away with that more with the wax pencil. You can with charcoal or pastel or something like ink, graphite. <clears throat> Kind of make a back and forth motion 
and up, you know, just kind of a very soft. I barely put any pressure down on it, down on the on the paper, so I can just ease into that dark quality, and I can soften this up, like so. Like you know, to turn your body, turn your hand, and just keep kind of working it to keep that softness going. There we go. It's working pretty well. <clears throat> So you want to get to, you know, sections about 85% done, and so you can leave yourself another pass later on to really, really tighten up, I think. It will do you pretty well. <clears throat> Through here. And softer and a little bit, just a touch, touch darker. Right in through here. Kind of a back and forth motion, just to bring that to a head, clean it up a little bit. And then some crevassing dark in through here. Again, I'm not going to go for all that stitching in there, it's too much to ask. I'll put everybody to sleep. It's going to be a long one. Hang on there. <clears throat> so I might darken up this core shadow here just a little further in the lip. And through here, coming up. Soft enough edge. This is turning, transitioning over. Then it gets a little creased in through here. So a little stronger, dark, and a little bit more of kind of a, curve, uh, a deeper kind of value and line. Right in through there. So it almost is gathering in a shed, a little dark on that back end. So that'll help this turn be kind of a deeper crevasse like we saw earlier. So these things kind of begin to equal out, don't they, a little bit. <clears throat> in terms of what they're doing, in terms of the technique of edge control. Light value, contrasts, and edges degrees of contrast and value, no matter what you're drawing, is kind of the name of the game there. <clears throat> okay. So right now I might take my hard edge, watch this, I'll come in here where it gets kind of deep, a little, a little dark area on this lip here, and it's really deep in there, so I'll take my straight edge and just kind of work that dark line. I still haven't broken this pencil. I should just break it. Just go ahead and break it, but I'm not going to do that. Let's see how long. That would be cheating. We don't want to cheat. All right. I don't know where that little crease came there. I'll just keep that. Something on the paper <clears throat> that happens from time to time. <clears throat> All right, running through where this is darker. Up and through here. So you have to, probably what's also hard, you have to go back and find where you're at often. It's like, where am I? Where is this crease? So that's, that's also what's difficult with, with folding. That's why you should never, never worry about being 100% accurate. Uh, you want to get the essence of that, otherwise you'll drive yourself nuts, I think, quite a bit. <clears throat> All right, that's working decently now. So I'm going to come over here. I'm trying to find this little section where it, this second section, you can see where I'm pointing here. It comes out, see that? So we're going to bring that out, that anchor of the darks underneath there. This kind of curls in, right? And it's kind of like this area. It's kind of a conch shell. It comes in and over, and it turns in, and around, and it's going to give us this little sort of shell look. But we're going to simplify it for now to curve. See that? that curvy look right in through there. And it's kind of into this triangle area. A little smaller. Probably made that a little too big. Right in through and down. <clears throat> Where those come together, this creases in and up. Two together. And so this will be a little bit thinner right here. And up. Remember where that's creasing in? 
So you can think geometrically for a while, angles, until you get to those organic creases, right? So this is kind of a triangle off into here, isn't it? Up and through. I know this will be darker, so just a little darker. So I'll play off that in there. <clears throat> From here over, I can see a, uh, another anchoring point we have. This is going to come down elegantly. Okay, right? So where the edge of the light ends and the shadow begins there, the light and dark change. So I feel another area where I can feel, begin to feel the difference. <clears throat> I'm going to go a little bit darker, all that. We'll go darker to fill that through. <clears throat> and so now what I want to try to do here, my thinking is, is to get these darks laid in on this side and then get the darks laid in on this side further so that I can really see the detail inside here. And then later on, I'll go for the detail in these darker areas. So now let me come on this side. And so I'll take with that little little dark little point there. You kind of see that at an angle. And I'll just kind of make sort of a kind of a straight line, which is pretty tight line, like so, to help me out there. Okay. And then where it begins to curve and break up a little bit. So it's like a it's like a triangle shape. So stop for a moment, and take a look. Do you see where? See how this is a triangle here? Do you see that dark shape? Forget about all the detail in it. So see how this is a triangle, right? And I'll put it in a little shadow, make it more general. And see how I use the abutting end of my uh, triangle tool to help keep that in there, okay? And then see how this, this was a triangle too, right? But this is also kind of a rectangled, large, shape in through here and then we see that this is kind of a a structure a rectangular structure that holds that in a little bit so that's kind of what i'm looking for to help me trap uh, some of these darker uh, values but then really shaped so i can see this uh, much much clearer and ultimately cleaner in the long run in the future this will have a harder edge since it's kind of a, a nice ending to it so we can come down here and play off that a little bit, make that a little stronger because that's got a nice darker edge to it, doesn't it? Let's go a little bit, maybe a little bit lower and around. We can do that. <clears throat> So it's all about controlling edges. There's so many things going on, pitch and roll, high and low, right? Uh, rolling across, uh, light value edges and contrasts. Okay. All that's working together to help us through, you know, which is a really difficult, I think, drawing. So we're picking apart here. So now let's think of it in, in still kind of a shape orientation. Where are those shadow shapes now? So it's very flat thinking, almost like a graphic novel here. Okay. Right. And then there's, so there's that shape. Watch this. I'll fill it in. I haven't even thought about the folds yet. I'm just thinking about the shape. There's that shadow shape. Okay. And then downward to where that fold is, and it folds starts to come out, okay, like so, and this will be a little bit lighter. Take my needed eraser here, trusty needed eraser, like so. So let's find that shape down below of shadow, okay, here's another one down here. 
So I'm making these a little bit harder edge and they will be later on, but I'm drawing lighter so you can get away with that. Here. <clears throat> See how the shape the shape curls around and up through. It's still kind of medium, like four on the value scale. It's not very dark. This all this is going to be grouped together. This is going to come down, right and over, okay, and through, okay, and running through here. And then we've got these kind of S curves, right later on, okay. So we'll block all these in first. Let's get all that blocked in. So don't worry about all that detail. We can really size that up later. We're just kind of getting all this shadow in through here. We'll solve it up. We'll even bring this all the way over to there. Right in through. Okay. So we can take that on uh, as well. So the next thing I'll do is come back over. And I'll find kind of where this fold is here as this comes across uh, and through. And he wants to come back and lip. Right, and then come back over and clean up right through here. Okay, right in through there as these kind of come together. See how they grab together because of that dark? Right through there. And up and over next to the kind of the squid head there. You can find that a little bit further. There we go. And so I'm finding where this turns over, where that dark is, where that starts, that really turns pitches and underneath right in through there. Okay. Okay. <clears throat> okay, underneath here to there. Okay. There we're coming down and over. Alright, coming in. And this might take out a little further, so watch this so I can come over. I want to make this a little bit wider. Okay, so I can take my hard edge, open it up a little bit, run it through, make it a little bit wider. Blow that off. Okay. Just blowing off my drawing. Blow off. Get out of here. Okay. So this is a hard edge where this fold comes underneath. And you see that little gathering that starts from all that under folding? We can get to that detail later. But right now we're going to simplify that, that turn, that kind of lacy, stitchy fold later on. If we were doing a quicker sketch, you'd have to just gesture it in and be satisfied with a looser approach, which is totally great. Which is, I most probably would prefer to do that most of the time, but this is a little bit longer, longer drawing. Either way is fine. So that'll have some dark in through here. So this opens up where that dark is now. Through here, coming down the edge. I'm going to tighten this fold edge a little bit with a little, just a Kind of a, a hard, soft but harder edge. I know that sounds strange. Right in through there. And all this is going to be darker. So I'm going to reconstitute this line where that fold is under there. Okay. Here, curves in a little bit. Downward and through. And off and over. Okay. So I know that's going to be darker, right? And then this is going to have a fold in through here. Up. And through and over and around. This is going to come in through there as well. Okay, so got that. So we have that now. All right, so now we can go a little bit darker even still. So let's ease into that. Okay, so all this will be darker.
Okay, and we can just build that up over time. So you can come back over here, begin to take this into another layer of darkness. We're not going full dark yet. We're just getting a little bit further because the important part's still more in the light. We're just separating this value, teasing this value out one more range further. Later on, this will have that little slight little change in there. Okay, this drawing is no different than a long term figure drawing, really, or a long term still life. We're just focusing in on the object. You'll learn as you begin to get more comfortable with drawing and more competent and more masterful that most all of it is about the same. So, this can be pulled over later on. And through here, and this will go a little darker later. We can later on we'll pull some more of that detail out, but we'll soften some of that too. We're just kind of setting it up for other areas to help us see through. Because you can come over and you can start to see how this shadow here lips through here, right? This beautiful little curve. Okay, we're drawing that in to the edge <clears throat> and over this divot. It's kind of like that little divot, but uh, in through here it curves through, and we'll just put all this in shadow for now, and we'll control that later with more more tightening. Through here, it's kind of like doing this here, and then we're doing it over here too. Here, over, and through. And we're just softening it through, turning it through and around, turning it over here, correcting our errors and adjusting. Don't be beholden to your changes, your errors. Don't worry about it. Make some adjustments, make some changes. It's okay. This will come over later. Through here up. Not gonna worry about that for now. <clears throat> Clean up your drawing as you're working through. Keep it a little cleaner when you can. That'll be important for you. Okay. <clears throat> so I'll add a little bit more here to the background as we continue to move forward here. It's always good to work those together, the background and the, the positive space of the object, positive, negative space, very, very important. You want to also remember when you're working your background tone, bring those values all the way up to these edges. You don't want to leave a little halo around it. Okay? You always want to bring that crispness or make the crispness um, of the edge work for you. It sounds like Christmas, I know, but the crisp edge. That's what I'm trying to say. We don't want to make it Christmas, I suppose. Maybe unless it's Christmas, Christmas time. But we're working with crisp edge there, so that reads as an object, the blanket's molecular edge here, right, is the, the end of the form against that darker, that's basically a wall in my studio at the university, just a black painted wall. <clears throat> and you can come across your different techniques and kind of cross hatch if you want very lightly, just to get that edge tightened through there. There's many, many different ways you can do some do that. It's mostly a sketching technique I have now. Alright, so what I want to do is <clears throat> come back over here and work this middle section and starting to, to uh, evolve it further and tighten up uh, some of these areas to get it to 
this kind of relative look for now and then later on we can come back and make another pass at it and make a real more final resolute uh, kind of uh, finish. Okay, so working in through this area. Remember your darks are really kind of your anchors in most every kind of traditional more academic kind of drawing which we're doing here and through this area. So I'm picking apart where that darkest crevasse is now. Really really getting back into that through here. There we go. Let's see that area and then we're gonna make sure we come back in. Some of these other folds I'll get even later. I say that a lot later but it is kind of a um, you decide what you want to do at the moment and then come back to more specific passages later not because they're hard but because their time is really not yet come in terms of minute detail which comes ultimately much later if not last so we're jumping into these darker areas and through here and we've always notice how we're building up our shadows too from even though they're darker, we're not going absolute dark with them until we need to to get that final value push that we that we want. Here and through. Just playing, uh, uh, not playing, but really recognizing light value edges and contrast. One's a hard edge versus a semi soft edge. And so there's so, such minute detail in some of those fabric folds, it pleats that. We don't really need to get all that unless you're again going for something photoreal. So down in through here, it's kind of a little triangle of dark right in through there. <clears throat> Working through this area, coming over, and later on this will turn into that really definitive little plane change, the fold in through there, here, and then of course it'll it'll change over later. Kind of a stronger pleat. In this region. This will help me locate this darker value here later. Come up and grab that a little bit in a moment. Go up and through, get some bit more narrower there. <coughs> then you want to keep your or different types of erasers very handy so that you are aware of, of keeping your drawing nice and clean for now. You can break those rules later. There's, there's plenty of reasons to be dirtier, if you will, or sketchier or smudgier for certain types of um, expressive means to an end. And coming up through here and over. That will hide eventually under here. It's kind of like a little shelf that goes over and through. I won't get into that later. I'll leave that knot, this tie knot later. Kind of 
get some time to cast shadow underneath there. We'll just mark that with a little bit of a dark. And then coming down there. Cast shadow here. We'll just mark that too. And it gets a softer edge as it starts to come down the fold there. We'll leave that for now. That kind of marks the start of that knot in through here and up and around. Okay. You can see how dirty my hands are right through there. It gets a little smudgy. Take that right on off. <clears throat> back and just clean up those little areas when you need to <clears throat> and then stay the course it's a long it's a long project and it's kind of additive subtractive you can come across and work these through I might take a little Japanese mono thicker eraser and through here and make sure we get this shape I'm going to keep those shapes as accurate clean as possible as long as you can. There we go. Through here. I might also start to put some tone, background tone. Since I'm going to need it anyway, back in through here, just to start to contrast that out. It'll help me see that edge a little bit better later on. Where that knot is. So this fold, this curved fold, comes about almost halfway, doesn't it? About running through here. And so that tells me where I want to make my background turn through here. <clears throat> All right, so now coming through and over here where that, that pleat is and through here where it uh, turns at a little bit stronger uh, for, uh, angle. Do. Okay, running through, that's where we're at there. To here and to up. Okay, and over. And that turns into, on the other side here, um, it's kind of a stronger uh, open area here, open, open here, and we have that coming up and it gets, it thins out, and it kind of runs into shadow wise, um, right up in through here. It's really difficult to, to find where you're at sometimes when you're working these things because there's cause such an abstraction in a way to them. So you just have to be disciplined throughout. and. Really be slow, slow it down. It's to be a slow drawing and really, you know, pinpoint <laughs> and figure out where you're at. So that's about the best, some of the best advice I can give. Now coming over past the pleated point here where, it, where it's going to turn in and lip up right in through here, this little area. And through here, I'm going to throw a little bit of tone here for now. I'll need it later over here and soften right past that, okay, is where it gets more complex again. 
doesn't it run in through here? So we have that, and it gets into these relatively stronger folds over and through here. So we'll want to gesture those out again, kind these circular sort of uh, under pleats and under curves or pitching, rolling run. So all that's going to be in shadow. I'm just going to kind of begin to generally uh, draw it through in with more of a kind of a tonal gesture here like so and then over so I'm constantly thinking about the gestural movement of it, the design of it all in relation to what I'm observing so it gets really squeezed right in through here at the end because all this is in shadow so it becomes narrower even though this is going to be more complex running right through here so it's like about 60% of it finished in terms of when you lay it in at this stage and it's still got 40% of because you're constantly tweaking the value and the overall shape of it too and then it comes over here and it gets a little bit darker as it comes up to the apex point up all the way up into and about through and over to here, doesn't it? So, and this is where added subtractive means when you're drawing, even on a more additive drawing like we're doing now, will become really important. And I can start to add a little bit more tone back into here. And I kind of like a little atmospheric look and then more of a, cro a hatched look too, but you can do all kinds of things later on with your drawing. <clears throat> you just want to constantly come over here and Erase out any smudging. So it's still kind of a one step, two step drawing, isn't it, over here? See how this is a little bit more finished over here? It's still um, in a different stage over here. That happens sometimes in these long term drawings where they can be in different stages. Don't worry about that. As long as you realize what stage it's in and where you're going, what you're doing, you'll be, you'll be fine. You'll be fine. Totally fine. <clears throat> Darkening up that little edge. Coming over, okay, and then we're gonna these these begin to these folds will later on begin to turn and turn and curve around and through and up over and narrow this folding pleat a little bit later on here. So I'm kind of just visually in my mind measuring the distance between a lighter area, a darker area, and these kind of run together right now. Later on, I'll separate those out too uh, as well. So we come through here and over. Okay, coming through there and back through. Okay, and then it picks up, doesn't it, about right? Not the end of that knot's going to be curving through where it kind of pleats and folds together later on. Right in through here. Right, and up and over, something like that for now. Okay, it'll disappear in through there. <clears throat> so those of you that are in YouTube land, do this one with me and then do, I get a lot of questions about what do I do next or where do I go next and that's, a, that's what happens when you're on your own studying and you don't have at a, you're at a school or a university, it's like you don't, you don't know, right? Well, all of these exercises are meant to be done with you and I together, okay? But then after that, you're like, okay, where do I go? And the answer to that is repeat the, the project, but do one on your own. Set up a still life, set up a, uh, a, a drapery study, set up, get figure models, go to Croquis Cafe, do, you know, go find new models, use the ones that we have and repeat the exercises as, and they become second nature 
and so and then do do expressive finished drawings that are yours. And that's the whole point. The whole point is not to practice yourself to death. The whole point is to get good so that you can begin to become a, a, a practicing artist of, of some uh, intelligence and some uh, confidence. And then let the chips fall where they will out into the art world, which is a whole you know, new range of topics of what's fair, what's not, and what goes on out there. Just like any other business, really. <clears throat> but that's a whole new, a whole other discussion about, and that's really not what the drawing database is for. It's about drawing, drawing techniques and um, getting better at the, the uh, craft and the profession of, of drawing and applying it to all kinds of places you want to go. So we finished this little, or I laid in this little curvature here. It's kind of a divot. It's kind of like what happened here, a little bit here. So we've got that over, and then we've got this shadow here. But I want to get over on this other side, about right here is where it separates. Do you see that? It's like these long tube triangles, and they're going to come over and come over and come over, and they're going to come over here and disappear in. In a little bit because it's complex isn't it? it's a lot to keep up with there we go okay and then right in through here it picks back up again do you see where it gets really dark up in through here so I'll go a little bit darker not too dark right now we can always go darker and pull through here Okay, this dark folding pleat way back in that underbelly of that. That's going to fold up over here. There we go. Okay. And Coming through, yeah, sorry about that, lost my train of drawing and talking. In darken through here, and see how it comes down and then it starts to get a little bit more hard edged. Well that hard edge really is the, the other fold. So we have to put a little bit more medium tone dark under here to get that as so it comes through right in through here, and then disappears right in through there, okay? So that's what we're looking at, right in through there a little bit. That's a lot, isn't it? It's crazy, totally crazy. <clears throat> I'm gonna stand back and take a moment to, to look at that and cry. It makes you wanna cry a little bit, doesn't it? So yeah, it kinda makes you wanna cry. It's so complex. I hear you. So I've got this, this pretty much basically laid in, okay, and through. so I'm going to go take one more wave inside this section here and pick it apart just a little bit further. So let's start back down here a little bit, okay, tighten up this little edge here with a little bit of, of structural line, not too heavy. All right, <clears throat> coming in through. This little, let's look at this shape, okay? This little rectangular shape here to here, and it, it, it kind of moves up and over and comes in. It gets pretty dark because it's all cast shadow within that little separation of that pleat and fold. And it's going to get, it gets thicker or thinner from, th from thickness, and then it comes over and starts to end a little bit then out on its way up to that little region, a little bit of a pleat fold. We'll make that work for us there. So I'm strengthening up these edges in through here <clears throat> in this shape. So we'll stay within the shape. 
That's why this is going to be a super, super long drapery study. I can feel it. It's going to be a mammoth one. So we'll make that shape stronger. Now within it, you can see where it's a little darker. See how it comes in through here, then it curls around, right? And it comes back over a little bit. See that? Okay, so we want to get in there and get that very subtle contrast between these, these uh, there's a, a shape, there's a little fold in there that's picking up a little light and it's curving a little bit, isn't it? So we want to get that working for us here. <clears throat> it's curving around. So I'm drawing the dark around it to define that lighter area in there. Okay. So I'm going to get my little triangle that we're going over here. <clears throat> there we go. I put my hand down a little bit on it. So I kind of use a movable little line edge to help me out a little bit. And of course I curve it around so it looks, it's not um, a hard edge, but it looks organic. So we're going to darken it in here. Okay, staying within this little rectangular area of a darker shadow. But we have to be mindful of what's the value range within it. It's not absolute dark. Absolute dark is probably almost some of these cast shadows from the knot on the wall. That, that's probably dark, some of the really inside darks. This is about seven and eights, six, seven, and eights in the value scale, so be careful with that. That's one of the mistakes that I see students do is they go too dark too quick, because I did that when I was a kid, or, or when I was a student. Some of you were young at heart, and that's awesome. You're never too old to learn. I'm learning new things all the time. As I learn them, I fail. I fail them because I'm learning. It's like, well, what am I learning different now that I have it? Well, for me right now, we're putting a new kitchen in our home, and so my wife and I did all the demo and uh, cleaning out the walls and electric and things and. Now we're about to install all the cabinets and all that plumbing and all that. And we're doing it ourselves. And by and large, we're doing a really good job. We make a few mistakes here and there, and we have to correct them. <clears throat> so that's part of it, just like in life as well. So we're just getting a little darker in there, feeling that in. But see how it starts to feel more atmospheric through that that fold and you can see where this parts to pop out and it's get a little softer with it since it's not quite as light there and you just just gently go over this drawing to adjust those values down a little bit. It's what makes it different than painting. As you can glaze over a drawing really quickly but the painting it takes more time. Same kind of concept though. <clears throat> so this whole area right could, where it's lighter, where that little pleat is in there could go a little, just a little darker, just a little bit, just a, it wants to come out, but we don't want it to be too, too rowdy, too dark. There we go. Okay. <clears throat> so coming in through here and up and over. So now we can hit this shadow shape in through here a little bit. So where it comes up and over there. A little harder edge. Isn't that just a little bit? And we can define it as this comes through a little bit. It takes a little bit more time to come across. It doesn't really overlap it much, does it? It kind of abuts almost, actually. 
in through there and up and around. <clears throat> okay. Turn on the air conditioner here. So, working this shape of these folded sort of pleaty things coming through, I'm not worried about every single one. You see how this value here, right in through here, kind of runs into the same value as inside here. Now this this triangular shape, there's kind of two of them, is a little bit lighter than the overall value here, right? So we have to look at that. So everything is in comparative relationship right to one another. So that's important. Okay, so now I'm going to come through here a little bit. <clears throat> Feel this over and through, where that curls in, kind of like so. Let's get the major now division between the two here. Okay, it wants to come over. Done that like so. I'm just going to lay that in. So now I'm drawing within the shadow shape, another gesture, another lay in within that here. Okay. It's, it's softer edge than what you think it is in there. You have to be careful. Okay, coming through. You know where this has a little ring to it. Underneath there's a little curve. Okay, and do it up and over. <clears throat> Curls around and there's a thickness to that. It gets a little bit lighter, doesn't it? And through here, it's a little darker. Okay, you can take my pencil and just kind of use that edge to butt to it to make it a little, little darker there. <clears throat> This comes down to a fold here, a little fold, a little pocket of dark. Just little changes in contrast, little subtle changes in contrast in value, isn't it? Just a little, not a whole lot. See there? <clears throat> Up a little bit and over. Here, okay. So there's definite definition or def def defined space between the two. So we're going a little darker. And up and through it around. A little darker through here. Overall, the whole thing is getting a little bit a little darker, just a little bit, barely. So I'll kind of glaze over it with a coating of slight value change darker. If I get too darker, I can always erase back into it. Not a problem. <clears throat> so it gets a little bit darker in this fold, right into there. So it's really getting in now to the weeds, 
more specific area some of it. This is basically a also a lesson in a way, if you will, on texture, the texture of the fold too as well, if you think about that. People forget that smooth smoothness is also a texture like wood bark or uh, porcupine hair follicle type that that kind of thing all kinds of fur you know that kind of that kind of an idea that's all all texture too but also smooth things like glass and bottles and Christmas ornaments that are chrome like with color there's a really good artist a friend of mine her name is Cynthia Peterson if you look at her website I believe CynthiaPeterson.com or 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 something like that, and she does a lot of still life work that's that deals with those kinds of textures and saturated colors that are pretty pretty fascinating. Okay. Do, 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 do. A little softer right into here. Okay, it's going pretty well there. I'm not after every pleat and fold, I'm after a good feeling of it. Simplifying is okay. Through here and then up and through. To get that simplifying, it's about getting the right value in the area more than anything else. Because ultimately, at the end of the day, we're going to look at your drawing, not the image that we're working from. That will go away forever. <clears throat> so you want to be softer edged in there. Best you can. It's picking up a lot of reflected light in the shadow. It's in the shadow and it's we're picking up reflected light to get a little bit of, of some definition in there. That's why we're seeing that through there. Just a little bit further. There we go. So that's starting to pop out for us a little bit. Now we'll start to discover this side of what we're doing here. So you notice along this edge, what makes this is a little bit harder edge and the many layers of this drawing, this stronger edge is really just a darker value against a lighter value where it folds together. So you've got to keep this edge really crisp. And through here it gets knotted and then it comes on in and over. So it's drawing not so much the edge, but the value around it going a little bit darker to make it pop out running right through to there. There we go. That makes it feel a little bit more comfortable there. Through here and then over. This could go a little darker. It's about the same dark as here. And that makes what next to it here a little lighter, so that's got to go a little darker. See how that all plays together in a little softer. If I go darker, that will soften that up a little bit too. Just a little bit. Right in through here. And that's it. Soften that up a little further. And then right here, I'm going to take my kneaded eraser and break it into little parts. See that? And then this could be just a little... A little lighter, so I'm going to dab at it. Just take it up a little bit. See, I could take it up just a little bit. It takes it up and through. Works out for me there. <clears throat> okay, so now coming over to get uh, into the deeper woods, if you will, on this shape a little further. So where this pleat is in through here, narrow this up a little bit to here. Comes through, pleats over, does it, and around. Never truly kind of a bust, does it? And then around and over. And kind of in this little spot here, it gets a little darker where they kind of almost kind of touch and overlap. It's the limits of working from an image, it gets a little bit 
difficult to see. Working from life when you can after these lessons is so very important. That's why how I train working from life almost exclusively for a good while. Okay, so let's go. Overall, I'm going to go just a little darker. Glaze it down a little bit. What I mean by glaze it down, I just mean just, just go over it and just make it just a little bit darker overall. That's what I mean. So if you've painted enough, you kind of understand that sentiment a little bit. <clears throat> you know, if it gets difficult, sit back and have a little cry. You know, I do that off camera. Right before I come on, I cry a little bit because I know this is going to be teasing. I know I'm teasing, but you get the idea. Is sit back and, and look at it a little bit longer, study it, and say, what am I doing? Is this pretty accurate? <clears throat> Get us through. Okay. And then through here, this is a little bit darker, and I'll pick apart that with the erasers later. <clears throat> Those areas, one of those areas that make you just begin want to cry a little bit, have a little, little two-year-old tantrum. I have a niece that's four now, four and a half actually. Thank God, she's almost out of that crazy tantrum phase, right? Those of you that are parents out there, or if you still have tantrums and you're you're a mature adult like me, I still have tantrums. Not really, but. Sometimes my students think so. I can be tough on them and, and uh, be hard on them. They think I'm yelling at them. I'm just trying to get them ready for the real world. <clears throat> they think I'm tough, then it might be, we might need a, a definition on what really being difficult is. Because ultimately, I love my students. They're good kids all over. All right, so. Even the ones that don't like me much, and that happens. All right, so curving in through here, around. See that little fold there now? That's a little fold that we want to get to that cuts in a little bit through. And up and around. And what's going to happen here, there's two darks around it, because this goes in. So this lips up. It's like a little loop up. So it underneath low, and then comes up high again. And that's why this is darker, right? through here but it's soft and it's not too too dark there it is a little bit just a little darker to raise this little lip up and this lip goes on and over to about right to here and it kind of disappears into that but it gets a little darker in through here curves a little bit more so I can change that shape a little bit curve it around a little bit then it comes over a little bit digs in through and that's about as fine as detail I want to get to it's starting to really get too tedious and we can simplify it down so running through there and over because there's another pleat change in here I'm really not interested in getting to and through there. Does that make sense? Hopefully it does. <clears throat> Unless you're a photorealist and you want to spend about three days writing through here, which they can, if not more. That's not what this is about. So, All right, so a little darker in through here. Okay, and a little darker in through this area. A little dark pleat point right through where it turns nice. Little kind of a dot right in through there. That's feeling pretty good. 
and over. Now what I'll do is I'll take Japanese mono eraser and just gently, it could go a little bit lighter, maybe right here, just gently graze, glaze over it, kind of, I'm just pulling it off barely, I'm barely touching the surface, but just enough to erase a little bit, it's a little bit lighter, I might even use a smaller one, see the difference between the two, the, the edges, I've got three of them, a big one and a medium and a small one, right, so let's use the smaller one now on through here. And see if we can pick apart just a little bit. I'll lighten it up with just a touch right in through here. And it's, it still works pretty well even with a waxier substance pencil. It's not like charcoal, but which is preferred, chalks or graphite, but uh, you can do a lot of great things with wax pencil. It's ultimately the artist that's going to decide these things. <clears throat> Do here. Okay. Nothing through. Over. And a little lighter and deeper. That makes it look a little, a little bit better, more realistically, closer to what a, what we're doing. I need to get every every fold. I don't want to get the overall feeling. But the big thing is my are my values correct and they're looking looking pretty correct there. I'm gonna go lighten this up just a little. Just a touch in there. Just to soften it up. And I think we're we're okay in there. Looking pretty good. I might take just a line here and let this fold come out just a little bit further. Linear fold in through there. I think we've got what we need in through that area. <clears throat> when in doubt with drapery, keep 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 your transition softer than than what you think you need. I might go a little bit, add a little bit of value in through here. I think that's gonna pretty much work for us. Maybe a touch lighter overall. Just take my pencil and dab at it. Excuse me, my eraser needed eraser. Dab at that just a little bit. And so that's a good strong anchor point for me right there with that value. That's gonna help anchor other areas further. So what I'm gonna do now is come back in work this uh, shape here. So this this larger dark shape uh, from the kind of the squid head little shape we have here of the fold. So really if you follow along with me here down and over to this line I'm going to work this now like I did this that will help me anchor quite quite a bit too. And I'll probably, once I do that, just to give you an idea of how I'm thinking about evolving the drawing, I'll probably then come down here and catch all these dark shapes like we've done here. You know, I probably should do it now. So that's probably what I'll do. So I'll catch these dark shapes and then the next phase will be to go and start to go into the darks and anchor them even even further. So why don't we, why don't I, and you and I, do that if you're just watching along too as you draw. Sometimes I, I get it, it's kind of hard to draw exactly along with me. So you're kind of using it as a mentoring device as you do yours. Um, totally get it. It doesn't have to be exact. As a matter of fact, it's just a guide, it's just a demonstration. So keep that in mind uh, as well. All right, so I'm gonna kind of block in a little bit more over through here. So what I'm gonna do here, I'm gonna shorten this. I wanna keep this fold. See how it folds in, see how I've got it abutted. Either do one of two things. Either 
take it uh, off the paper uh, further or bring it higher. In my case, I'm going to bring it higher, so I'm going to shorten this up purposefully. So just make sure that you understand that, and I'll, I'll talk more about that. I'll keep reminding the viewer of that too as well. But I did that compositionally because I left myself with not enough room here. And so I'm, I can, because it's not the figure, so it won't, it won't matter proportionally. So I am going to shorten this a little bit. So I'm going to bring it to about right here and give myself a little space. Well, later on that will be dark. So it's not completely accurate. That's okay. That's a design choice. We're drawing analytically for the pose, the spirit of the pose. We are not copying. We're not copiers. Drawing is not copying unless for some reason it needs to be, you know, some kind of exact copy. Um, and even then you're probably going to be have issues in, in, in with that. So that's the design decision that I made. I'm in control of the drawing the composition and aesthetically I want this to be a little bit in between there or raised up in the composition so it doesn't abut or touch right to that. So what I can do then is start to take some of this uh, value here, this background tone, and start to do it also out here as well. You see that? So I can start to do this with the drawing and <clears throat> just give myself an anchor so I can see everything as it, as it comes in and it evolves too uh, as well throughout the drawing. But your, draw, your drawing is going to go through different st stages, especially in a long-term drawing. This one's going to be quite a, quite a long study. This would be in the university probably like a two full day class session, maybe even three, no more than probably three. And each class that we teach is about three hours studio time, so that's that could be nine hours. So whatever it takes ultimately. So now see I can come here and work this value and see how this ends with a little negative space rather than just kind of slightly being right touching it or I think that's a better design with the space rather than cropping it way off but cropping it is a better idea than letting it just touch at the, at the, at the edge there. That's, a, that's a probably a poor choice so I had to make some design choices there as well. Constantly cleaning the drawing where I need it later on. Even wax pencil gets a little smudgy. You have a little smudging on your fingers as well. So you want to, you want to take care of that. So now I can kind of bring this off and over. Now because some of this value underneath this kind of bowl shape of the um, drapery in this, in this study, in this image, I can go ahead and catch it too. I just need to make sure I keep a definitive little edge for now, later on, so that um, I'll know where the boundary is, because that's ultimately going to be darker. The background is is decidedly darker, right, than the uh, ground or the figure of the of what is the cloth <clears throat> there. Okay, we're gonna block. So we're gonna block all this in, like I talked about a little earlier. <clears throat> just get this edge through, tightening up that edge, and just getting this shape. Now, again, this is gonna be shortened from the image. And that's okay. I'm gonna cut off. You know, I'm gonna I want to get all these folding knots, these things that I can, and then wherever they end down at the bottom, I'll just I'll make an adjustment. So that might be hard for for some of you that are in that beginning intermediate stage to to um, to get a handle on is artists ad lib all the time all the time you know, much of what's made in art traditional renaissance baroque drawing and painting is imaginative and changed and simplified for the viewer and for the artist to fit their aesthetic and so that's pretty important to understand. It's not copied verbatim. 
at all. I think that's harder to get an understanding of. And so we're working now, there's this little darker patch. I'm just going to put it, estimate where I want that just to give me an anchor. It's not, not that I can't change it. This is going to come out. Of course, we've seen this little looping before here. Okay, I've seen that. So you notice a lot of times in my demo drawings, which which are okay because I'm talking and they have to edit. They're not as, it's not what I do professionally. They're a real kind of dry stylistically. I'm not really that um, interested in talking to you about style. When I do the drawing and art history series of just lectures about artists I think are important for looking at drawing and I'll talk about their their historical context, their time period, and how st style was a part of that and how the, the dictates of fashion, uh, the aesthetic at the time helped to dictate that and how, how changed that is quite a bit now from, from when it was um, when they were practicing arts to where we're at now. There's all kinds of things going on now. It's not just one uh, academic kind of aesthetic, which is great um, for the most part, I think. Artists have a lot more freedom. I'm just going to put all this kind of in just a casual sort of shadow here. It's pretty close to the same value as the background, and that's okay too, because I can tease that out later on there. I'm just trying to get um, separating one and two steps, light side from darker side here. The bigger one's going to fold in, like so. And up and through. We're going to underfold here. <clears throat> So most of the times that you'll draw cloth or drapery will be over the figure on furniture or some kind of auxiliary secondary nest in, um, to the main thrust of the composition unless you're going to make an issue out of that solely, which has been done. And that's a little bit more rarer than, than not. <clears throat> but generally, drapery, etc., is a, a secondary aspect. So coming across this curve to get a little bit of this folding in here, I'm shortening it up. Remember that. That's okay. You don't have to on yours. You can be if your composition is different, because I left myself a little bit less room. No big deal. No big deal. I'm not going to start over. I'm just going to change that. So I'm working the darks around the light. I like this little lip. It's really pretty cool, isn't it? Kind of like, like so around. This is mostly darkened through here. Kind of like that shape as it comes through and ties in. This goes behind that. So just kind of grouping the form shadows and the cast shadows. Very very kind of flat orientation I'm looking at, just a light side and a dark side. I don't care about coarse shadows right now. Um, I just want to separate the light from the dark and see it so I can see it for a long time as I relate all these values together. Notice how I don't work one little section um, and exclusively to a finish. We work the entire thing together. And this one's super complex for drapery. And through here and around, so I'm going to catch this edge again coming over and then it loops back around, turning back this way, which is important to denote. Okay, it's coming back this way. And through here and around. <clears throat> So let's get these darks in through here more anchored and over through here, through here, through here. There we go. And around and then around so we 
catch this little lip for now. It's a little bit tighter edge as it curves around. Darker and this will cascade over. We'll get all this loop de loo wave a little bit in the future. I know I keep saying that, but we're still kind of in a block end phase for most of it. And this will come down. All that will be, most of it, all of it's in shadow, really. But we want to tease out some of the differences here. <clears throat> So this will be this will be altered because of this the squeeze nature of that. So just keep that in mind. I might eliminate this middle big middle fold in through here. So I might just take this like so and come up through that. So I'm going to leave that for now. So I make I'll make a decision more on that later on, just to give you my thinking. And again, that's why I think these longer videos are so important because they, they tell you what the thinking is. If you get ten or ten minutes of just a fast time elapsed video, you're not you're not gonna get it. So and those are cool, those are flashy. People like to watch those too. I get it. But if you're a serious student of the game of of of, of art and drawing, I think you'll want to see the deep the deep stuff. I do. Hopefully you'll appreciate so I'm just gonna just Glaze over this soft one here. It's not a major shadow right now, but right in through there, so we can see that. So you can, it, see, it, it emerges in a very um, minimal way, but there is a separation of light and dark. So this little shape here is the light part, roughly, kind of conical as it comes down, kind of a conch shellish waterfall, Hawkeye waterfall. You don't know who Hakusai is, if, if you hear me referring to it. It's an ancient Japanese artist that worked, I um, forget what century, 18th century, 17th or 18th printmaker, and, and known, famous, world famous uh, for his, the Hakusai Japanese wave. So he's an important artist you might want to look at in Japanese. Eastern art, which we still don't really talk enough about and, and look at enough in Western um, academic training university settings. So we have the art history courses, but we don't we don't reference Asian art as much as probably do more than we used to 30, 40, 50 years ago, but probably not still enough. So it's probably generally up to the student to bring it to our attention when they're working on a, a show or a project. Probably more so now, but something that's there. It's not Art is not just Western art. It is art of Africa, Asia. And Asia can be separated into what we call Far East, Korea, Japan, China, um, Thailand, Singapore. And then there's the Southern Asian a subcontinent of Indian, Pakistan, Bangladesh, that area as well, so, which I've studied quite a bit, Indian and Pakistani art, it's pretty fascinating, Hindu type work as well, one day I'll get there, my wife has been to India, she's a healthcare worker and she's been to India on trips, Bangalore in the southern part, working on healthcare projects. That's before I knew her, so it's been a good while ago. <clears throat> People always ask if my wife is an artist. She's not, but she has the soul and the heart and the, the mind of an artist. She did her 
most of her work in French literature, and then she works now in healthcare. How about that? She has a PhD in French literature and grammar, and she studied in France and lived there as well. So shout out to the Sorbonne and to Paris. So I'm just kind of filling this in. I'm just kind of uh, not going as deep as I even through here, just kind of getting a general feel for what this could look like, how I'm going to work this, and letting you know my process a little bit. It's kind of an M shape. Can you see the M shape up and down, kind of like the McDonald's arches? That's kind of an awful analogy, but you get the idea. So I'm a vegetarian. We don't eat, eat at McDonald's much, unless it's like for hash browns or something. <clears throat> So this little hill later, this will all be become a lot more definitive, but for right now we have to take it in a general sense. So I'm not using line anymore to define M, I'm using value tone and separations in there. So this M's here, then it comes up a little bit. So I'm just going to get the general sense of it as it runs into this area just a little bit, down and up and through here. See it emerge, kind of this M shape. Here a little bit and there, down and through. Flips around later, which I want to keep. Remember, I've shortened this up. Here's the ending of it later on. You see that together. <clears throat> this still kind of looks like a baby's diaper. See where the legs would come out, right? It's so uh, hilarious how that is. <clears throat> Kind of a yin and yang shape. See this little white area here and there? You have to be careful because it, it um, don't outline that too heavy like that. It's a little harsh. I have to soften that up later because I can, I can go back and soften that and change that. But you have to be careful as I'm just defining through there, you know, picking apart some of these shapes. None of this will be totally exact, but it'll give you the feeling of the image. So keep that in mind. Unless you want to plot out every angle. That's not what drawing, really drawing is about mostly traditional academic drawing. It's about the analysis and simplifying. But if you want to be totally, truly accurate, get out your calipers and your measuring, do your calculations. And if you can stand it, keep going. <clears throat> Through here. So we're just being patient, picking apart areas. I'm going to pick apart this area again. So notice I did it gesturally with the red. Now I'm going to come back and do it stronger with black. I mean, I could do it with black but first, but I kind of like you to see the difference of these different stages that we're, that we're working with, too, as well. <clears throat> Tilt this strong up a bit. Lean it over. There we go. <clears throat> so this big shape here, all the way to here. So I'm grabbing all the shadow, not just those, those separations of shadow, but I'm grabbing all of it. Yeah. And 
through here, not worry about every single detail. We'll simplify into some larger general shapes and we can delineate and go into deeper detail later. I think I give you a good, a good uh, foreshadowing of what we're going to be doing all over. It's something like that to, to there. So we come down, it's kind of a dagger shape. And through here, maybe a little bit smaller. So all this right now can be put in shadow. Mm -hmm. And then we can pick apart that later on to add it in some subtractive means as well. <clears throat> Then I'm going to go ahead and start running this. See how I'm doing the outside too? That's going to be that darker wall. Just go ahead and do it together when you can. That way they can all run, just run together. And then see how I can start to come across this back edge and that really can cover the entire area. Really important to get that separation going in my mind. <clears throat> through here and then I'm getting this tone to work for me that kind of that daggery shape or sort of a, a stalactite through here around. Just try to be relatively careful about this shape. I can get more detailed and you can get more detailed as you go along. We just want to be in the general ballpark of all this. Like we don't want to be putting this over here. That doesn't make any sense, right? But it does if we're close and we can gauge what we do later. Simplifying all this mess. All this beautiful detail. Mm. Doing around up and over, coming over through here, okay, and then around. So we got that in. So it's looking stronger. And I'm going to go ahead and pull in the rest of this background to here. You notice how I, I gently always just start to move right to a palm method, but more the um, conductor. See, I'm holding my pencil to get far away from it to keep it really loose and to cover a lot of. Uh, area pretty fairly quickly with my pencil and the pencil is almost horizontal. I'm just picking up just a little bit to make it mark. Right in through there. See how we start to get this and you kind of fade this out for a while. You want to be careful with your backgrounds. They're part of the aesthetic of your drawing. People Young kids, students forget that's my job to teach them that. Make sure they know. Just later on that'll go darker in there. So I can just kind of indicate that now by going darker in there. You can move that in different ways. Constantly adjust your edge if you want. So I'm just going to bring this over and I'll just go darker to show you. It's going to get pretty dark in there. Hopefully my head's not too far out of the way. So that's what that'll look like coming through. Later on in the drawing. And just kind of clear up this top a little bit. Generally speaking, flattens here. 
flattens over and across and over, like so. Kind of like an ice cream cone, top of it a little bit. All right, so let's get these bigger folds now coming on here, okay, and around, like so here. This will come down and around. And down through and over and over here. And then we're going to just now find that shape. It's kind of an L shape here, right? Maybe just a little space in between here, just a little bit more. This would get wider out a little bit later. It's kind of like a hockey stick. Hockey or field hockey. Which I used to play a lot. I love field hockey. Those of you that are from India or Pakistan or the Netherlands or parts of Europe, you guys understand field hockey really well. We don't, you know, field hockey is not a big, big thing in America, in the United States, unfortunately. It's a great sport. So those of you that like soccer a lot, you'd love field hockey too. I used to play that quite a bit. It used to be on um, forward. So we'll come through here. And then open that out. Okay, here we go. Through here and through here. It'll catch that. Just trying to keep that shape alive in my mind for now. Working it big and broad. Just working it all over. <clears throat> and downward. And coming through here now. We've got this L shape that's kind of in shadow. So get a little bit more of it. And we'll cross this little nice open sort of canal here. There's a little bit more uh, shape in there. So what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna, I know it's a little, there's a little lighter fold in there. I'm gonna, I'm gonna take that out for now. And I'll race back into it to get it. So it comes up here and over to there. And then it catches back up and through here. And so I'm gonna bring that all together just in my mind to keep it cleaner and I'll pick apart all those changes later so I can really see this coming through. There we go. And that'll help me out later on. <clears throat> see what we've got as we start to go through. And then I'm going to do the same thing now over here with the knot as well, this tie-in uh, through here. Uh, I want to go and, and make that um, uh, blocked in a little further now. I'm going to take this all, uh, higher, this darker, a little bit darker tone and bring it out of there just a little bit. We can start to see that it's going to contrast. <clears throat> I just want to work those edges, catch those edges. Don't let that edge become too soft when it's a hard edge at the end. So you kind of have to, you have to constantly go back and adjust it and catch it, don't you? All right, so let's let's work this knot over here as well. <clears throat> okay, so looking pretty good, I think. We're coming through pretty nicely. Let's work this knot. Come on over here to the side and let's get these bigger shapes so we can see them again. Okay. So we've got this foldy curve up and around and through and around it turns and through here and over. <clears throat> it opens it up. So just these triangles and little curved rectangles and whatever you organic shapes that you want to call them and name them that's what we're looking for Let's go curve over later on. That'll be kind of a 
cast shadow. <clears throat> so I'll simplify here down. <clears throat> to kind of a curved little roundness for now. Whoops. Like I got an email there. Okay. Coming through and over. Cut into this a little bit. And around. This is going to hub around. So. Over. Just going to put all this in shadow. For now. Kind of a cylinder or sort of a ball shape, if you will. Through here for now. And come through, get a little higher here to the edge. Okay, and then there's not a whole lot of sh too much shadow left. And through here it ties in and out, doesn't it? Through here, and that's really taut, and it pulls over and through, which is kind of a nice look I like that. <clears throat> and there's a little shadow here. And over, and we're back to kind of where we started from there. And uh, through. I'm feeling pretty good there. Right, so feeling pretty good about that as a general lay-in. As a lay-in. It's not finished. Not in any, any part of the imagination is it finished. I'm going to dig deep into here. Bring out that edge and kind of do what I did here a little bit. And just darken it in. A little bit further. <clears throat> Get it on clean a little bit, even though I'll tone over it. And so again, I'll, I'll butt my triangle here, and I'll just leave it up against that, so I can run my edge against it. Then later on, you can turn your paper. You're drawing 360. I've done that before. I'll probably do it again to get the right hand angle that you want when you're drawing. I'll just use that to butt there for now. So I can get this background time to come out a little bit for me. <clears throat> there we go. A little softer underneath for now. Just for now. You can go in different directions. Just to help fill in the gaps. If you go too active and too crazy, it'll take away from the aesthetic of the, the drapery, so you have to be a little careful there. I've got a video on backgrounds. It's a shorter one because we were in a rush for COVID-19 teaching, but um, it's there if you look at the, the figure section, I think it's in.